Hi, I'm Craig Fawner. I'm an instructor in the Media Arts Department here at ACAD. Um, and I wanted to talk a bit about this thing here, which is the Raspberry Pi. Um, the Raspberry Pi is a uh, very tiny computer that runs the Linux operating system. Uh, and it can be used for a lot of different things, a lot of different kinds of embedded projects. But one of the most useful things it can do is it can operate as a media player to play a high definition video and output that over HDMI. So it's a lot more practical than using DVD players, which are not as high resolution and uh, a little easier to use than uh, even a Blu-ray player as you don't have to worry about finding a burner and uh, you can just run video straight off of a USB key. Um, so what I'm going to do today is run through a bit of how you can take this computer and turn it into a media player uh, for video or for audio. Um, so the first thing that you're going to want to do uh, when you're setting up your project is just make sure that you have uh, a video file in a proper format. So uh, I'm going to start with a video that is in the MP4 format that is uh, 1920 by 1080, so it is HD resolution. Uh, so you just want to make sure you have a reasonably high quality file uh, and the kinds of files that the Raspberry Pi can read. There's a variety, but MP4 is kind of the standard. So uh, go with MP4 uh, if you're exporting from Premiere or from Final Cut or something like that, and you'll be good to go. So there's a few components you'll need to configure uh, when you're setting up the Raspberry Pi. For one, you need an SD card. Uh, and the SD card is what holds on to the operating system um, that runs the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and what usually you're doing at the Raspberry Pi is you're downloading uh, firmware that someone else has created that serves a specific purpose. So in our case, there is a publicly posted video looper firmware uh, that we're going to be using. It's called the Video Looper, uh, and it's available on this person's Stephen Hickson's uh, blog. So the link for this will be posted uh, below the video. Um, but if you go to this website, you can find links to download the software. So I'm just going to show you where those links are. I have this downloaded already. What this file is, is it's, it's called a disk image, and it's the file that uh, contains all of the software that will turn this empty computer into a media player. So just download that and um, let that download. And also what you need to do is get some software that will allow you to flash that disk image onto this SD card. So uh, there's also a piece of software you'll need to get uh, called Win32 Disk Imager. And just so you know, this, is, this whole process goes a lot smoother on Windows machines. So uh, if you can, try to set this up on a Windows computer. Um, so Win32 Disk Imager allows you to take that file you're downloading and transfer it directly to this SD card and kind of uh, replicate that disk image uh, on this card so you can run the operating system. So uh, give that a download as well. Uh, and when I open this software, I get a um, prompt asking me for an image file. So I can navigate when I click on the folder icon. I'll navigate to wherever I placed that software. I'll open that. And I also need to set a device to uh, flash that to. So uh, you'll want to take your SD card uh, and just plug that into a card reader. There might be one built into your computer. Or if not, you might need to uh, get an external card reader. And you should see a device pop up. Now, this is a really important uh, thing to mention. Uh, make sure that you don't have any other external hard drives attached at this point. Because if you do, you could risk erasing all the content on them. So if you have an external hard drive or anything like that, uh, make sure you eject it. Um, the device here is reading as device ID G. So just to confirm, just to make sure I'm not going to um, erase anything I don't want to, I'll just navigate to. Um, my computer, and I can see that G is my removable storage device that I just plugged in. So I know that's the right one. It's also the only option I have. Uh, but in order to flash this, all you need to do is hit the right button. And what the right button will do is it'll erase whatever's on the SD card and replace it with this firmware that will allow you to uh, run the Raspberry Pi as a video player.
So I'm just going to hit right. And it'll warn you, again, that make sure that you're not flashing this to the wrong drive. Otherwise, you're going to be sad because you erased all your data. And hit yes. Uh, and this process takes about five minutes or so. So we'll flash forward here. OK, so the flashing of the firmware to the SD card is complete. Uh, and so it gives you the right successful dialog. Uh, so I'm just going to navigate back to my computer to see that. So now I've got a device here. It says boot uh, as the title. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open this up and I'm going to navigate to this file that says looper config. And looper config is the sort of preference panel for this software. So it allows you to set a couple different options here. Uh, there's really only four options you have, but there's one in particular that's really important here, and that's this USB option. So with the firmware that we're configuring, you can either have video run directly off of, off of the SD card, or you can have video run off of a USB key. I find that running it off of a USB key is a bit simpler because you can just drop the file in, or if you need to switch something, you can just do that on the fly rather than having to actually launch this as a uh, desktop computer. So if you wanted to launch it as a desktop computer, you would turn off this auto start option so that it would boot into the uh, Linux uh, operating system and you could access the file system and so on. But since I'm just going to use it as a USB device based media player, I'm going to leave auto start on and I'm going to turn uh, I'm going to turn this USB option to one. So when I change it from zero to one, now it's saying, okay, let's just read files off of the USB key that's plugged in. And after this, we will drop some files on a USB key. Uh, there's a couple other things here. Uh, audio source is something that deals with um, which device the audio is going to go across. So you can send the audio across the HDMI interface. So if you're plugging this into uh, a screen like the one behind me uh, or uh, any other device that allows you to play audio via HDMI, you'll probably want to just leave that. If you know that you're going to want to run audio through uh, a headphone jack or out to some external amplifier or something, uh, you can change this HDMI option to say local. And when you change that to say local, it will switch the audio path to go instead of through the HDMI, it'll go through this um, headphone jack that's built right in. So uh, I'm going to change it back to HDMI because I want to run this on this screen behind me that uh, carries audio over HDMI. So I'll just leave that. And then seamless is something that we don't really use too often. It's if you want a loop to be completely seamless and not kind of stutter at the beginning or end. Um, this is something that uh, is still kind of an experimental stage. So we're just going to leave that at zero for now. Um, so go ahead and save that file. Uh, and when you save that, really everything that you need to configure on this SD card is configured. Now the next step is actually putting your video file on your USB key. So go ahead and grab a USB stick, something like this, uh, and throw it in your computer. And make sure that there's nothing on this USB stick. You wanna make, you're going to have to format it and uh, uh, put your files on afterwards. So make sure that there's nothing important on uh, the USB device. So navigate to that under your uh, devices uh, on your Windows Explorer and just give it a right click and uh, hit format. And what's really important when you're dealing with the uh, Raspberry Pi firmware that you're using is that you need to be on an NTFS file system. So when you format a USB key, it can be a variety of different uh, types of formatting, different types of file systems. Uh, make sure that you're on NTFS. Unfortunately, if you're on a Mac computer, you can't format to NTFS on a Mac. So it's important that you're doing this stage on a PC for sure. So uh, change that to NTFS if it's not already, uh, and then just hit format. Uh, and it'll warn you again that you're erasing all the data on the disk, but uh, that should be fine. So this should take a couple moments. And then it'll tell you formatting is complete. And at that time, again, just navigate to uh, your USB stick. I'm going to open up the folder that my file is in. And again, this is a, an MP4 file. 
And this needs to be placed in a folder uh, in my USB stick called videos. So the Raspberry Pi is going to look for a folder called videos, and whatever it finds in that folder, it's going to play back in sequence. So I just want to have one video, but if you wanted to have multiple videos, you could, uh, and it would just play them back in alphabetical sequence. Uh, so I'm going to take that MP4 file, drag it into my videos folder, and that might take a second. This is a pretty large file. So once you have uh, successfully transferred your video over to your USB key, you can go ahead and uh, just safely eject uh, both the USB key as well as the uh, SD card. So just right click on those uh, and hit eject. And that should pop those out. Uh, and then go grab those from your computer. And you can pop those into the Raspberry Pi. So on the underside of the Raspberry Pi, uh, there's an SD card slot. So um, have your SD card sort of face up and just slide that in at the bottom. You can kind of see the contour of the SD card shape on the bottom as well. So uh, make sure that's in there firmly. Uh, and you can place your USB stick uh, in the Raspberry Pi as well. So what we have right now is basically the full setup. We don't really need to do anything to this in order for it to run. So what this is going to do is it's going to run the video that I put on it in a loop forever as soon as this thing is turned on. So all I need to do now is plug it into an HDMI-based monitor uh, and plug the Raspberry Pi into wall power, uh, and it should all work, we hope. So first, you're going to want to plug in the HDMI cable. So there's an HDMI port on the side of the Raspberry Pi. So just slide that in. And then there's also a power supply uh, plug that is on the back, kind of close to the SD card. So I'm going to plug that in. When I plug that in, you should see some lights. And when this first starts up, you'll see a uh, kind of boot sequence. You'll see all this text. This is just something that happens right at the beginning uh, when you plug in the Raspberry Pi for the first time. Um, then you'll see a splash image show up. Um, and after this point, the video is just going to loop forever. Um, so this whole sequence only happens once at the beginning, but uh, your video will just loop after this um, until you power the Raspberry Pi down. And all you have to do to power it down is unplug it. All you have to do to power it up is plug it in. So there's no on button or anything like that. And there you go. Video plays back, and it will loop as well.